is going to approach this year, or um, hey, by the way, our commission structure is changing. You know, just some little things like that that I think are pretty important when you're out there. One, to be an expert in front of your client, kind of get ahead of them, because they can find out pretty much everything online, right? So, lot inventory, um, pricing, kind of. Um, but yeah, so a lot of salespeople even show you online. So, um, who here has sold so many construction? Yeah. Um, how was your experience? Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. What's your name? I'm pointing oh, you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know her. No. Um, Catherine. Hi, Catherine. Hi. Um, I had a couple of, um, I've done Arbor homes. Um, the experience there was, was pretty good. I mean, they were happy with the product and the process went very smooth. I think the process now with the MI new build. Lease new build. Oh, great. And then I've done an Onyx lease spec, MR spec. So. Nice. That's a good range. Um, are your Onyx and East in East Hampton County or? Yeah. The one that's the new construction, new build now is in West Clark. And then the other one does it right here in South Washington. Oh, here in Long, so. Yeah. Fantastic. That's a perfect sampling yeah. <laughs> of building and specs and. Uh, Anybody else want to share a little background on what yours I've, were? I've just had, I've only had two. One was a pool tee and it was a spec. And then I've got a client who literally went out on her own and <laughs> had nothing to do with it. I worked with her for a year. She goes, hey, I just go out of house, just so you know. They put you on there? They, was, they did. He called, the agent called me and put me on. So he was a good dude. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I have great experiences with the pool tee and Davis. Good, good. Yeah, yeah I'm in the middle of one with Pulte now. You know, this could easily get down that like grumpy path of the builders just demeanor right now with, you know, how they're just taking numbers and don't feel our partnership in some arenas is very valid, but that just makes you sharpen your saw and say, all right, cool. You know, I gotta make sure I'm there at that first meeting and don't be shy when you're talking to your client because they're going to go look at new, they're going to see it online, the specs show up in the BLC. So you just put it in your mix, don't eliminate that new option and just be prepared. There was kind of a day when you could like, hey friend, uh, my people might swing by, that won't really fly anymore. Um, you, you just got to do what you got to do and get there with them at the model and get them registered. Um, trying to start at the beginning while also adding some salt well, and pepper, some stuff. Since in. we're doing uh, all to proactively do that, because if we're going, like I have a client right now, he's a family member who's looking at new construction. So I'm going and picking up the packets and meeting the salespeople, and I want physical packets because we already just go online and say, right. and I'll go ahead and register at that point and say, by the way, I'm coming back with, and I don't, I give the clients first and last, first names, and I use my last name and all my but it helps to show that I, I'm the procurement office. Mm -hmm. It's a little extra, but. And when yeah, I'm, it, I'm gonna, I'll do I'm maps gonna, for my own knowledge, but then I'm also like, okay, show me your map. What do you got going on? Oh, you only have one lot left and it's not great. And you can only build this one house on it, you know, but then that doesn't work. Um, so to, I'm gonna back up to what you're saying about going online. So I did say when you're going online, They'll, they love their um, online salespeople. Um, so they'll, you know, capture leads and start that conversation in a chat or something. And those online salespeople are really like another sales staff that, you know, warm up those online buyers. Um, and they can hound you just like we sometimes have a nice warm internet lead. Um, so I tell my clients that too, same as Wendy says, like put my phone number down, you can put my name down, whatever you want. And the, you know, conversation with them is like, trust me, you don't want them calling you 8,000 times a day. So just let me kind of be your gatekeeper. I can sort through what's good, what's bad. We'll make sure you get in the right direction. Some people are like, cool, take care of me. Some people are like, no, I got it. So you gotta just weigh that out yourself and sometimes get ahead of it. And, protect yourself um, and get yourself registered with those people that are like, kind of need you, I kind of don't. And you can feel that too. 
Um, but yeah, the, when you do go online, you're trying to get more information, just know that you're going to get an internet salesperson and then you can, if you want to go that route, great and get, um, you know, some basic information on the fly or after hours. Uh, just some basic things too. So in the model, um, you have a, you know, usually one or two sales reps and then they have sometimes model attendants. Um, and, you know, they work every day like we do. So sometimes they'll take Monday, Tuesdays off, Thursday, Fridays off. That's good too if your client is poking around a certain neighborhood or you have an idea of like, hey, this is going to be the one. Even though you're looking everywhere else, I know we're going to end up here. This just happened to me this spring. I'm like, why are we going anywhere else? This is the place. <laughs> and it was. So they ended up there. Um, but I forget, I was getting that. So, um, the days where the agents are <laughs> <laughs> yeah so the days they're off um so i go in there the model ten is there so you don't want to necessarily take your client there um you want to be there with the salesperson so that's pretty important because sometimes it's a day when they're off work i mean then you're down to maybe two days where it's a match and there's one lot left or there's two specs left and you kind of got to hurry it up figure it out um the best thing too, and it totally depends on the sales rep. I mean, I've got a guy that I love working with at Lennar, and he just can't. Like he's just like I, I have been working twelve hours a day right now. I, I love you and I want to help you. Here's what I can do, and like kind of get me just any kind of information or update. Um, and then there's another rep, a different builder, who wants to tell me about her dog, and I'm like, no. So <laughs> he kind of. You know, you, you have an objective and you want to get some information. So the other one, I was like, okay, tell me if my clients chose these three homes, they need a third car, they want a loft, they want a basement. Just give me the big ticket. They're not really going to polish it up. Where do you think we'll land? Like at least see if that's an option. Because if you know it's like a builder that includes a lot of things, but their price point's like that 325, your client's like 375. If it's faulty, no way. You know, they're going to add... 75, 125, you know, who knows? But if this builder, you know, has some good included features, it might work, you know, in that one little spot, that right lot, you know, it, you want to kind of do that investigating. And the right salespeople can help you. Like they'll, all right, cool. You know, I've sat down without clients and priced out. And I'm like, hey, you know, I saved you two and a half hours. <laughs> of sitting together and doing the 20 pages of, where do you want your electrical outlets? <laughs> there are 15 of them. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you can save yourself a little time and save your clients some time um, and doing some of that upfront work too. So I'm talking now also about relationships with builders. Um, go to models, hang out, give them business cards, um, I did get a couple of listing leads just from relationships, not expected, not necessarily asked for, but now I'm definitely asking for them. Um, didn't get on the buy side, you know, because I didn't bring them in for that, but um, it does help because that's when I get the gold. Like, Lenar, perfect example. Brooks Farm, which is Noblesville, it's like Summer Road, just west of Town Center. Uh, so three different product lines. They're going to put out 12 to 15 specs every month. So like just rotating in, they're almost trying to avoid building and just give the city houses. Like so here it's- Are they putting those online? Cause not all builders put their specs online. They are not putting them online. So I did a fun why video. You gotta go visit. Yeah. I mean, that's see. why you gotta go visit. So um, I did a fun video, which, you know, when they say just do it and post it, don't even look at it, that was this scenario. Um, so this was Union Crossing in Noblesville. And these specs here, they're not online. Like maybe half of them are. And granted, they're not done maybe till September, October, but who cares? These buyers are like, good Lord, just give me something and I'll live with grandma. I don't care. So, um, that's another question. So you're going out, you're talking about what lots do they have available? You're asking, what do you have permitted? What do you have like getting foundation next week? Just share with me a little bit about what's going on in here. You've got hundred neighborhoods you could run around and do that, you know? Um, 
So talking a little bit about spec versus proposed build, uh, Davis does a lot of proposed build where they just go out and get the permit and they just sit on it, you know, and wait for somebody and then let somebody can like that house and then choose their cabinets and their flooring. But most builders will just go out, build it, and sell it. Because well, of our market, yeah. They've shown it's not always, they haven't even pulled the permit. They have just worked with the listing agent saying, let's put a, for old fashioned words, let's put a ghost listing on this house to show what it could be. Um, as listing agents of lots, be careful because they're trying to lock you in to a listing to only sell it to them. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, just because you see their ghost house on that lot does not mean that's the only thing you can build. True. Yeah, perfect. Um, yeah. And Davis, I was talking to Francis super late last night through texting. Um, I said, hey, give me some scoop. And she said, honestly, they're kind of focusing more on your lot. And the cool thing is, I love Davis for this, for those people that are like, hey, I want custom or, hey, I can parcel off a piece of you know, my dad's land, um, Davis will start to finish with you. So they'll help with everything, your infrastructure, you go to their design center, it's a much more controlled environment, you can even use their plans. And they have a generous amount of plans, I don't know how many, but you can modify those. So consider production custom. Yeah. And they already have pricing for utilities and all that kind of stuff. Yes, yeah, so they're well septic, they'll do it all. That's someone doing that right now. Awesome. It's, really, it's been an interesting process, but what's a little different versus the production neighborhoods. So this one's in Fortville and Blossom Trace, and they have access to a handful of lots, but the building supervisor is not in the neighborhood regularly. They are really spread out through the city. So we're not getting updates as frequently. My client is running a place a quarter mile away, so of course they're there every day, right? <laughs> so um, you know, it's a little different experience on that side. But um, they are doing a lot of nice custom you know, features. Uh, they had a great cell center in Fishers. Uh, my clients are actually building the uh, the home show house that they had oh, called, cool. called the Woodford. It's the first one. They're the first ones doing that. Very cool. But the experience has been a little different. It's not traditional, I'm assuming. I mean, I've only gone down sure. the road of like pricing, but never. No, they're they're really that in between. So yeah. They're not, the, they're not the production vinyl city. And they're not high end custom. Mm -hmm. It's it's in between the two where they have the system for custom, but they are, you're starting off at their basics. Yeah. So it's it's filling that in between gap. Yeah. And Wendy, you um, I was kind of checking on my Google sheet. I'll share with everybody uh, that you build it. Since we're talking about that middle ground, don't you have clients doing you build it in, the, in that Cicero neighborhood? Um, we, we have three builders who will build to any spec. Uh, it was you build it specifically. I think for something to build it. Yeah. Okay. So for our purposes today, Davis is a nice in between semi custom on your lot. And apparently that's kind of their focus. I'm sure. I mean, I've asked her before. Um, Hey, what kind of land holes, land position do you have? Where are, you, where are these lots that you're hanging on to? And they don't. They don't. All you kind of get a time with contacting any of us who have lot listings yeah. and seeing if we want to do a ghost listing on there. Um, it's great for them, and it's not always great for the seller because to get out of that is, is a little bit interesting. So it is strictly, yeah, they're just approaching and this, the listing agent has to jump through the hoops to get to that. Now. That's the person. So it's, yeah. it's an interesting yeah. scenario. I've approached it a couple of times and I've so was like, uh, no. I'm like, okay. Yeah. So, it's, Richie, you have someone with Davis right now. How's, where are you in this process? We are, we had our pre drywall inspection about a month ago. So, um, they are starting flooring trim and really the inside in the next few weeks. How was, how was the design process with them? It was good. Um, so they have a sales center in Fishers, uh, just south of, uh, oh, I forget the neighborhood now, uh, just south of De uh, downtown Fishers. And uh, it's in a model house. And uh, they're not at Keystone Crossing anymore. They might have space there. This is where they were doing their sales. 
some precedent. Priority it, the reason I'm asking is I had one built with them for a client a couple years ago and the design process was atrocious. They were so unorganized and I was embarrassed, um, but it was the only builder that could build what my clients wanted for the price point that they, that they could afford. But if they had to do it over again, I don't think they would have. Um, so I, I didn't know if maybe well, they would tighten some of that up that a little bit. But it has been, I wouldn't say they were the most organized. Well, I never say that production just went into custom to fill that frame in like the last two or three years. So I think like Silverthorne can now do the same thing. Um, Davis, there's one other production builder who, who will bridge that gap. Is it Trees um, do that too? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, and I call it design gallery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know they will do like a few site analysis mm -hmm. that you find a lot that you might be interested in, but they'll do that. Do you know what Davis does? Uh, yes. They'll do a few yes. site uh -huh. analysis as well. Yeah. Okay. Which dot comes to yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's free site. Um, which dot comes comes lost. And he does a lot up in Westfield. Mm -hmm. He's done a great job. That's more high end custom, right? right. But I mean, you could like, you're going to build a lot down to Carmel. And, you know, we build anywhere. Find a lot. Um, yeah, a lot of them do. Our Arthur Ruttenberg, I think they're switching to like AR homes, is, is a mouthful. They're very similar to where, um, yeah, they'll help with your site analysis. They fly you to North Carolina to do your selections. Um, but their process is intense, like a custom experience. And again, I got like 80% down the road with them. I didn't get flown to North Carolina, <laughs> but um, the clients went really far with them uh, and had a fantastic experience. Melissa Siri is awesome. Um, so that's another, I mean, I think they're trying to bridge the gap more because of land position and they're also like writing out of home sites that they're like, well, we got to go find somewhere and if people come to us with land, we'll figure it out. So that's good. Can yeah, that, yeah. I educate? So when when yeah. I started, when I found out we business, I got to learn all about land really quickly. So if you are taking a person to a lot and they don't, if the builder doesn't have their financing on your mind, Please consider going to smaller banks because the two questions that you need to ask is can you weigh the land to house ratio? And the second question is um, what type of loan? So, can I just buy a lot and build sometime in the future? If I buy the lot, do I have to build within a year? If I buy the lot, do I have to close right away? And we have a list of lenders. I don't have anybody in particular that I'm in love with, um, but we can always share that with you guys. The other issue is because we sell a lot in Cicero, Cicero is controlling the growth. So if a farmer wants to break off land, if he breaks off a 10 acre parcel, it is guaranteed to go to one single family home. And that's how they're controlling growth. Well, if you're buying a 10 acre lot, you don't want to put a McMansion in there in Cicero. The, the, so we had to find those bankers who will weigh the FHA guidelines of the 70, 30, House to value land. And we found some great companies who'll do it. I think if you want to give a mail, I'll send yeah. it over to you. Yeah. But so if the builder or the custom builder production isn't using their own lenders to have the set up key questions, can you waive that house to land value? And if they don't know what you're asking, guys, they can't do it. Just stop. Just <laughs> walk away. And then the other is is there a requirement for how quickly you build? Is what a lot of us are doing right now, or a lot of people are doing right now, is they're finding their land to build in the future because they want to pay off that lot and then deal with the house. Uh, and only some banks will do that. Don't most builders put a cap on it though? Like, yes. you have a year, you buy this lot, you have a year. Depends on where it is. Yeah, if it's in a seven position, yeah. Have the it have it yeah. I know yeah. Davis Homes, they'll, they'll buy the lot for you. Dries will buy the lot for you too. So you don't have to deal with that. they will just include it in the package. And I'm sure most of you have heard of First Internet Bank. They that's they really specialize in that. So they've they've been a really good partner. I know they partner at least they used to partner with Davis. And they were one of their two preferred partners. First Internet Bank, um, Ray Berger has been around forever. I mean, since almost as long as my dad had been in the business. Um, 
but they do a really good lot program, new construction financing. They can do anything. They've been the best that I've found. Any of your local banks are going to figure it out. Community first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are. Star Bank. Yeah. Farmers. Uh, farmers. Yep. Uh, there's two other farmers. Send to you. Bank is good. Like Star Bank. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of, um, and I've convened before, Wendy, on. Okay, what are my contingencies before you even consider this piece of ground? Um, feasibility, soil samples, those kinds of things. Um, and then I know I had a client call me on a piece of ground that they just started. They can get a perimeter drain, so now it's back on the market for 10000 more than it was before. I'm like, well, yeah, build on it. So what are you doing? That ten thousand may be the cost to find that perimeter or to tie into that perimeter. Mm -hmm. So the, the it could be that that buyer was locked at three hundred and it's going to take them three ten. Yeah, because uh, we'll get when we have production coming over. That's the first thing. Well, we needed ten thousand for okay, great. Yeah, it's not coming from us, but you go for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because they're they're used to dictating the terms and stuff. So that could be what it is. Yeah. Was the cost of building that perimeter? They're having mm -hmm. trouble finding the tile. Yep, for sure. You're probably right. That's right. <laughs> I've learned <laughs> yeah, I've more than I've ever wanted to know. All right. Um, so that's new and like on your lot. I didn't know we'd go down that road. But I would, I wouldn't go. I mean, I am not skilled there. So I would definitely grab somebody and walk me through that for sure. So I think every one of those is going to be its own animal. For yes, sure. Snodgrass does a lot. I do a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one other agent in the office. As Dustin told me that there was another agent in the office. Uh, yeah, just John. Yeah. John Merrill. Uh, John Merrill. Marshall. Merrill. Yeah, he's yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but just we'll help you do that. Yeah. So speaking of like scoop, I was trying to. Um, I don't know, just for fun. Like, where would you, where do I go? Who am I talking to to figure out what's coming soon? Um, hey, there's a piece of ground, there's some equipment moving, what's that gonna be? I mean, those are good things to pay attention to as well. So whether it's inside Indiana Business or IPJ or your city councilman or just going online, it's not much you can do about it and it might be a year away. But again, you're an expert and you're going to pay attention to what's going on in your neighborhood or in your city. So that's something fun to the back of your mind because it could be residential. I mean, IBJ is awesome. It's about throwing a headline out that says, you know, 600 homes being built in, you know, Hamilton County or Noblesville slash Fisher Schools. You know, they love that. So, and that's cool. So that's the other side beside IBJ. Uh, like inside Indiana Business. Steve, do you have others? I know you're active with the chamber, your chamber. And... So, yeah, so I'm the vice chair for the board for Westfield Chamber. Um, and I'll be chair in a couple of years. But so we have executive board meetings when we go to the chamber or the uh, city council meetings. We've got, I'll tell you another really good one that most people don't think about is the utilities. Oh, yeah. So one yeah. of our board members works for Vectron and he always gives an update every board meeting about what's going on in the area. So they contact the utility companies first as they before they even start taking down lots as they as they buy the whole plot of a plot of land, they'll contact the utility companies to find out what it's going to cost to bring the utilities to those. So the utility company contacts are really, really good and knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. They're going to know about things before pretty much anybody knows about them, including like inside Indiana business, IPJ, which are great, but that's like public yeah right at that point um some of the stuff he can't necessarily tell us because it hasn't been approved yet um, but he'll say hey just pay attention to this area there might be something happening here um he'll kind of tell me a heads up because he knows i'm in real estate so those are really good people mm -hmm. um and if you ever are looking for for something if you want to know what's going on if you're like hey i heard about this um, feel free to contact me and I'd be happy to ask my contact at Vector and he probably, if there is something, we'll know because they're all pulling those utilities in. Yeah. 
Why did you just let that? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, I sometimes I can, sometimes I can. It just depends on. You're not, <laughs> not at all. Sometimes I happen upon things just on my board, like clicking for ownership and like, what is this piece of ground? Who owns it? And I'm like, oh, it's the schools or oh, it's a utility. Oh, it's a whatever. So that's helpful, especially when you have clients who are like, I've seen a roll piece of something just in Woods and Creek. And I'm like, well, let me follow this creek and see if there's anything that's not going to go anywhere. Um, yeah, and there's so many layers to the land part. And adding on to this idea, I think the importance of going to the model home and getting to know the sales reps yeah. is valuable. If you can reach out to them and they'll have internal meetings about upcoming neighborhoods and you yeah. know, like, okay, it's right. a development, but when is that happening? Right. What products are they, is it a certain line of homes they're going to be getting to? What's mm -hmm. the price point going to be? So utilize those relationships. Yeah, so you're getting me back on track. So my super cool spreadsheet that I'll share with you, um, I have the number of communities, uh, number of current quick move-ins, and then they're coming soon. So, and this is 100% conversations with people, um, or, you know, they're on a phone call or text, but MI Homes has 12 new communities coming. Um, Just one more. Only five, he said. However, remember I said earlier, they're trying to do like 1,600 builds, not with clients attached. Just three and what's for the one? Yeah. Um, but then why not? No, Lenar. Oh, Lenar. But they're already, their land position is massive. I mean, if I counted their dots, you know, it's like 60, but they're, um, I also get their specs, which I'll hand this around. I mean, this is probably, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I mean, this is only 13 with specs in it, but the ones that are highlighted are their April focus. So, AKA, they're motivated to get those off their books if you guys want to make note of that. Um, Can I ask a question real fast yeah. along with this? Yeah. So, if you have a client who is looking for a specific area with criteria, and you're like, don't really care at this point who the builder is, where would you go? Is there like a resource to say, besides just Googling it, which isn't very good? I've tried going to the Baggy website. I have the app, but it's really glitchy and yeah, sucks. It I wish they would be a good aggregator for us because I think they'd be a, a huge resource. Um, builder chiming in? Else that you guys are going that you found is, is a good resource for looking for buyers that if you don't really care who the builder is or where it is or just in general geographic location. What do you do? Where do you go if you have a buyer like that? That's what they so, keep so, telling me. I'm like, that's what, that's what you have to do. The other thing with that too, um, Steve, if you have to like, let's say you're looking at Westfield, if you're going to Westfield, you're built 2020 plus. So that's what I'm just doing now. Right now. Says, somebody who can go anywhere. Yes. So I we put in her price point. We put in square square our uh, year built 2020 plus. And what that did was bring me all the communities. And then some of the communities I knew, like somebody with a two-year-old is not going to go into an empty nester neighborhood. I mean, that's just reality. Um, that's not steering for anybody listening. Um, so we, we knock it out. I'm like, go, go look at these communities and, and you know, they want to do research, go research, you know, cause you can Google those communities. But and then say that again, how you narrow it down. So I went into the area that they like mm -hmm. their price point very generously. Then you, at the very bottom, you add a field called year built. So then I do 2020 plus. So just yesterday, I sent over to this um, couple, like 11 communities, because they're, they're going to go all sorts of places. I'm like, we're taking this one off, we're taking this one off of here. So right now, today, they're Googling and checking out, and he's probably driving by, and they're going to give me the list of the favorite communities. And then Thursday or Friday, I will drive around, register them, pick up their packets, um, once again, register with first first name and the rest of my information. Pick up their package, drop them off. I don't know that that will eliminate any procuring cause issues, but gosh, that would be a heck of a lot of Yeah. So, 
So with that being said, um, but I, I agree. I think baggy. My horse telling us that baggy is the answer, and I will tell you that baggy is, is has a lot to be desired. It's, yeah. it's awful. But with that being said, I, I do hope that everybody here is going around and you get a new client looking at an area that that you are going and registering them immediately with your favorite builder rep, and hopefully you have a contact. I've never been a huge fan until recently of just having like one main contact just because they don't, a lot of them can't work in different communities. And I found the hard way that one rep isn't necessarily very knowledgeable in a different community, even though they can cross sell. And I've gotten some, a lot of problems with that before. Um, but I have found that if, if you do have a, your favorite rep, they can go to bat for you if you have an issue and if you have a relationship with them. But what we do, and I hope, I would imagine everybody else does is that as soon as we get a new client, if they are remotely even interested in looking in a certain area, that we go and register them with every single builder out there um, with our favorite rep so that we get them in the system with our name on it, locked in, so we can't get cut out of the deal. Um, and then if their car happens to find their way into that builder's parking lot on Sunday after church, that we're not, we don't lose out on that commission. Um, some builders, I'm sure you found, are better at with agents than others, and some are actively, like Ryan Holmes, trying to eliminate us from the transaction as much as they can. Um, but that's, and, and Thea has a builder route that she goes on every week, and she's got her list of 30 communities or whatever she calls on, and she does, sounds like you do as well, and goes in and calls on the sales reps, so she has a relationship with them, so that if we do get someone coming in, they're much more likely to call Thea and say, hey, Thea, I think your buyers, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, just came in, just yeah. want to give you a heads up versus, oh, so sorry, we, we didn't know about you, they didn't mention you, and um, they've already registered, so there's nothing I can do about it. Right. Yeah, in the Google Sheet I'll share, it also has the column, like, if they cross-sell or not. Some, and by that, it means, like, you sell in any neighborhood anywhere, some layer it up where it's like, yeah, we can only cross sell specs. Uh, Beezer's like, yeah, we can cross sell our specs once they're at phase seven, which might be like drywall or something. Yeah. So there's just some nuances there when you have that relationship with that one person. Um, you know where they live or ish, you know, and where they work. Like, yeah, you can help me out here in this area, but I'm not going to go ask you to help me in Greenland or whatever. Well, this cross sell. Personally, it would be like a, a model rep can sell any neighborhood, not just the one that they live in. Or that any neighborhood that builder. That builder. That builder. Yeah, with that builder. Yep. And they're, some of them are compensated a little bit differently, not that that matters, but just FYI. You know, they get a little bit less if it's not their neighborhood. Um, and on the spreadsheet, too, I do have like commission rates. And Lenar just changed February 1st. Um, and the, the Reps that have been around a long time are like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry, you know, and they feel for you. So that is nice to kind of, you know, have What's some commensurate to. And there's a variation of like whatever that commission is of the base price versus the commission of the entire purchase price, which would include their options. So there's some variables there. Mm -hmm. Like Pulte is base only, um, whatever. I mean, I'll put that. That's in the Google Sheet. So. The Google sheet I have, I think I would love for it to be like, I know, I can't figure so, out how to get it. So, so could, could you like share it with us, but yeah. keep it open so that yeah. we can update it as yeah. we're going through and maybe just have this be yeah. a working group so yeah. that we're, we're willing to share with yeah. everybody. Yeah. Um, and as you go to a community, you can kind of see that maybe the last person who was there and update it for what you learned and then we can all learn from each other and Michelle, keep yeah, each other from getting posed. This. Yeah, I've got um, it. <laughs> yeah, and it's like a, yeah, that was the intent. It's like it's a living, breathing thing, and we'll meet like every other month because once a month goes really fast. Are any builders that you know of incentivized for not having a real estate agent involved with their sales reps? Only what we grew up on. I know, I've heard two. <laughs> I know two. Call and say, oh, do you know? Use a realtor. I've heard one is incentivized five hundred dollars for not using us. Or they get paid more by not using us. Right. Yeah. 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 The one. Yeah. They get five hundred dollars more for not having a real estate agent involved. Are we allowed to say the names or not? This scenario. I, I wanted to stay in culture and just okay. be That's sunshiny. I'm just, I'm just asking questions. Okay. We're happy. <laughs> happy weekend, we made it. Yeah. Happy <laughs> is when we get paid. That's, yeah. That's happy. That's happy. So that's staying in culture as well. Well, it's kind of sad because we all. Boy, the same. The fan box. The goal is the same. Yeah. We're trying to 
you know. Well, not change again. It'll, yeah. it will change. It will change. I, yeah. And we will remember who has not been realtor friendly. So that's <laughs> just the way that we'll leave it. Yep. Well, um, I think it goes back to what, what Nikki was saying and Richie said it's a relationship company. You know, it's just like everything else. Mm -hmm. We also have some bad eggs in our industry mm -hmm. who thinks that just because they call and register and they don't do anything else that they should get paid. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it goes both ways. There's yeah. bad eggs on both on both ends. So yeah. We're sure. And overall, I mean they're a company, you know, they're publicly owned and they're massive nationwide companies. They're trying to shave off millions, if not billions. And how do they do that? One percent out of each house. Boom. Problem solved. And then they're back, you know, they got to go buy the land, they got to buy the lumber. I'm not trying to be empathetic. No, it's just to a certain It's a business decision. It's right. a business, it's a business decision. decision. Yeah, and no we've got, to, we've got to realize that. No, yeah. We make the decision on if that's a business model we want to follow. Mm -hmm. I talked to a builder last week. He just, he's a small custom builder. And, uh, and he had said, Steve, do you know what the extent of the price increases have been? And I said, well, I know it's been going through the roof. He said, let me give you an example. He said, for a five-eighths sheet of, of plywood, so it used to be like $4.98 that I would pay for each one of those sheets. He said, now it's up to $40 for the Insane. same plywood. Insane. And we've had other people literally following the lumber trucks. They'll see it. The builders will. The, the, the buyers will see it. And they will follow the lumber truck to wherever they're taking that lump, those lumber packs, and they'll buy it off the truck from the driver. Uh, and the drivers will sell it to them. They'll usually won't sell all of them, but they'll sell them some of it just so they can get it. And they'll say, I'll pay you cash, I'll, right. you know, whatever you want just to get it because they can't get it anymore. Yeah. It's I mean, crazy. That's the world they're living in. I mean, it doesn't it kind is. of it give is. us all some pain. I mean, same thing. I talked to somebody and they're like, yeah, my. Drywallers came up, you know, to corporate, and they're like, we want a thousand more per house. They're working Saturdays, Sundays. You see them out there doing stuff. I'm like, holy cow. Yeah, they want a thousand more per house. So who's going to pay for them? <laughs> well, and, and I will tell you, the attorney general, um, I was working with a smaller builder in Brownsburg, and the attorney general actually went after a group of contractors because there was a Facebook page that said, I am now only accepting this fee. So they were forced. Really? Yeah. Um, it wasn't any more what will the market drive. It was more the laborers collaborating on what they'll accept as their minimum wage, really pushing out the price. Wow. And because this builder had some really good contractors that have been faithful to him, those screenshots done and those were sent to the attorney general and it was addressed. Wow. So the builders right now are taking a hit. Mm -hmm. you know? However, they can still also be a very good partnership because I don't like 2%. But two percent is also better than nothing. Right. Yeah, yeah. But you their know? prices are going up too. I mean, it's adapted yeah. to the cost of the lumber, the cost of building a house, and right. Um, you know, you can't buy that house for the price it was last year. Or six, six months ago. Six months ago. Yeah. Ago. yeah. And that's something it's else. So you, the, what you do with this knowledge so in front of your client is graciously right. say, right. you know, builders, this is why, and this is how, and this is you know whether it's the cost of lumber or the cost of land or cost of labor. And yes, we'll hear communications when, you know, next time we come back to the model. And this is to me a driveway conversation where it's like, what he said about price increases is true. And I want to explain to you why. It could be a thousand, it could be 4,000. And um, I just want you to understand, you know, this isn't just this location, this isn't just this builder, and this is a little bit why we're experiencing some of this. Oh, okay, that makes sense. You know, so it's good to do that to me in your confidence instead of when you're sitting there shoved, you know, three or right. four wide with a little desk and a computer. Um, well, I'll you and have them say, look, um, it, just so you know, we're going to bump all these prices up and I can't control any of the option prices either. So I don't know what your price will be tomorrow. I mean, yuck. So it's nice for you to say, hey, this is probably going to happen. You're not ready today, whatever. So have you, just have nice you little... found though that like going into buildings at this point, it's like, I can't even put you, I can't even write a contract for you right now. You have to go onto a waiting list. Yes. Um, that was my next question. Because yeah. you're releasing yeah. only five lots, you know, in the next section in the next month. How so many my spread, yeah. yeah. my spreadsheet has it. I know that Pulte is, MI is, Harvard. MI is not taking anymore. Wait, I, well, in a, in, 
from in certain subdivisions. I know it's that not they are not sure. Yeah. Yep. So See, they all are in certain locations. What? It's it's, cert it's not all of them either. It's not all just certain neighborhoods. Just certain neighborhoods. And yeah. even like so same thing with county, just certain mm -hmm. neighborhoods. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, Colty is wrapped or uh because we didn't have a basement, we got put to the front of the line because they couldn't get the materials to do the basement. Really? Yeah. So no, let's that, make I sure mean, we understand we're not saying blanket statements here. We're right. saying it's happening in certain communities. I know they went to one in uh, it was Hunter's Run in Fishers, and they said we sold. This is what she was told by the sales manager: was they sold more homes in January that <clears throat> exceeded their annual goal for that neighborhood, and that the sales reps weren't even taking any appointments. Yeah. They're not taking a wait list. Yeah. They're not doing anything. They said we are shut down yeah. for the time being, and we don't know when we're going to open back up again. Yeah. And we've got a client who wants to be in that neighborhood and they and we said, so what, what do you suggest we do? And they said, just, just wait a few months and see if we start opening up again. But you probably won't even get in for, they said, don't even consider starting to build for another year. But that's, yeah. a, that's a great time that her relationships are going to matter because if she, if she has a great relationship with that rep and one of those deals gets, yeah. gets iffy, you know, because of financing and COVID and whatever excuse we want to use, I mean, life happens. Then if she has a really good relationship with that rep, and I know she does a fantastic job at this, that rep would have a reason to call her before anybody else. Okay. Yeah. And then if the client has the flexibility on four of them. Yeah. How they get around Fair House and the, uh, the wait list? Is it first in, first come? Like first come, first in? I, yeah. I kind of would think it would be so. Yeah. Right? So they said the only people that are on the list now are ones that that have deposits now, but they won't take any more deposits from anybody right now because they're so behind. Yeah. I, I've never seen this before. For that neighborhood that you just spoke, it's next door neighbor, building manager for them. They're oh, switching all their sales. Really and yeah. as of last week, so they're not even having sales people. Well, they're oh, having sales people, but they're just shifting yeah. around. People from location to different locations and higher level stuff. So, um, so the Google sheet that I'm going to share it does so have contact there. number of communities, um, number of specs uh, coming soon, the cross selling, the commission. Um, you need to get and then just like some notes. So, and then I have like contacts for almost all builders, but there's definitely some fill in the blanks there on like David Weekly. Um, Sorry, Steve, I don't have that. much with. Um, I was going to give Steve some kudos oh. for all his spec listings. It's impressive. That's all top. Yeah. So I've so got a, so, um, which <clears throat> I've got questions here that I want to ask the group too. Oh, okay. so if, <laughs> unless I'm derailing you. No, uh, yeah, we're good. So questions. <clears throat> um, so yeah, so I've got, I've got a relationship with all top homes. So we put up a lot of their spec homes. Um, and trust me, it's not, they only pay a thousand dollars for, for the listing agent. So you're not getting rich off those. I'm just here to tell you. It used to be a half a percent. Now they down to 1% or $1,000 flat, regardless of the price. So don't be jealous. <laughs> but um, I will lot say, for that $1, well, I mean, for us, we basically, it's an MLS entry only. And that's it. They don't ask us to do anything else. They gotcha. won't let us do anything else. We can't even do, I know some of you have asked about doing open houses. They won't even let us do open houses there, which is weird. We can't even assign in the yard. We just put a lockbox on and put in the MLS and that's it. But with that being said, Lindley Run is a, an awesome community up in Westfield, 191st Street, just about a mile and a half east of Meridian. Um, I just found out last week from an agent who had asked me is that, and I verified this with Altoff and they confirmed this, that they are not allowing any new construction independent inspections on their properties. That is the only builder that I'm aware of, unless any of you people have found out about this. So they'll allow a final independent inspection after the home is built, but they will not allow a foundation or a, or a mechanical inspection. And I went round and round with the sales manager as Which diplomatically as all top as, as diplomatically as I could without pissing her off, which I think I did a little bit, but um, I said, why is it that you will not allow a buyer to have their own independent inspection for uh, new construction and she said because we build it to our specs and the municipality specs in which we're building and we're not building them to the inspector specs 
and I said, well, I, I'm, I'm going to have to disagree with what you're saying there a little bit, but I would say that the optics that you are projecting to the community is that you have something to hide. And I said, I'm not saying you do, and I know you build a good house, but the optics are that you have something to hide. She told me that this agent who had, who had a really big issue with this was the only agent in the history of Altoff out of over 2,200 homes that built that had asked for three phase inspection. And I said, I don't believe that. I said, because I asked for it for every single one of my new builds, I suggest with my clients, whether they do it or not, but I'd say 60% of them do it. So out of curiosity, how many of you recommend a three phase new construction inspection for all of your buyers who build new? Yeah. So Especially three quarters of this room. Right? Yeah. So I, I call bullshit. What the three stages? Uh, I don't know that for sure. But as you can't did mention that when you were I saying who they were building the home. Yeah. yeah. I'd be I'd be I don't know that. Case. I should look so, at that. Thank you. Yeah, hey, two cents. Um, builders what Baggy is. is. So Baggy is the Builders Association of Greater Indianapolis, and it's an organization where builders and vendors are members and uh, they have created the building standards on the official name, baggy building standard book, like maybe 30 years ago. But that is the resource that a lot of the on site superintendents will reference when they're talking about cracks and heaving, especially that item in basements and such. Oh, our standard that's the builders association standard. It's usually me, the only thing I care about in there is the cracks, but um. That's their standard. So again, things as we mentioned with Baggy are a little archaic, um, but I wanted to back up and tell you what Baggy is. So has anyone else had any other issues with builders not allowing three phase inspection? That was my question. No, but I have no. Okay, there's a no. So all top the only one that we're aware of. Okay, good. My opinion. Uh, it, it might but have that logistical requests like have it be done by a certain time or they have, you know, those kind of things. But that's on yeah, that. but that's on you to make sure that you they're not going to delay production yeah. for you so that's on you to have an inspector that's nimble enough because yes. if you do the mechanicals <laughs> after the installations but then it kind of makes half of that inspection worthless Absolutely. Yeah. well i think the foundation inspection is pretty worthless but yeah unless it's a basement basement you have to even, do basement. Even with basement i mean in 21 years i've done it i've never had i one had one time the i've had an issue yeah. they walked away Wow. Same vibe. But the, you you have you, all you need is one. It makes <laughs> it worthwhile. Yeah. yeah. Um, Standing in the basement with the VP of Weber Concrete, VP of Sales, your regional construction manager, two uh, clients, and maybe an attorney is in the car. I don't know. I, <laughs> I, have, <laughs> I, I have had issues with the the pre drywall because my guy likes to check the roof trusses, and some communities the super will let us borrow the prints and. Then same color, like, oh, we don't give those prints on the go. We did it for these people over here in this neighborhood. Why aren't you, these buyers get an inferior experience with the same color? Mm -hmm. So I'll go yeah, around and around with them. I don't think they're doing it. I, I haven't tried to get a roof trust, or roof trust prints in a couple of years. And I guarantee you they're not giving them now. They don't have to. Um, so, yeah, with that, yeah, with that being said, and if they have any, if you do have any issues with the roof trust, they actually have to have an engineer prescribe the fix you they can't just yeah. right i mean that is an engineering issue you can't yeah. just say oh yeah we'll just scan that in they can't do that they, um any builder incentives that you're seeing right now i know builders really don't need them but was, 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 what? 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 These are, was like hey we're not cutting you remember those <laughs> these are these are going back to their eight percent so in like 2008 they were doing eight percent <laughs> And everyone got a cruise. So, so besides the financing, I mean, they almost all give the closing costs, assistance, and that kind of thing. But are there yeah, right, right, so, right, right, and yeah, that just, kind of follows into my my last question about that. But any are there any builders that are giving any any additional incentives other than just the financing or anything like that that you know of? I'll get like some options. Every Option, once in a while. maybe twenty five hundred. Okay. That's, that's Maybe a fridge. I love my fridges. Only if you're going 750 or higher, you get a free fridge. Okay. And the last one is the is the financing. So a lot of these builders I found have gotten really aggressive about getting their buyer, your buyer, to work with their lender 
Um, I know Pulte is some of the worst where they won't even negotiate off of sales price. Now, I know they don't have to now. This is like a couple of years ago when they were coming off, but they would say that that was an incentive to come off of sales price. So um, if you had another lender that they wanted to use that was not tied to them, they say, we won't negotiate on sales price. We won't give you any closing costs. We won't give you any incentives. Basically, what you see on there is exactly what you're going to pay if you're going to use your lender. Or you can use our lender yeah. and we'll do all of this stuff, I'm trying to think of which I think is illegal, but um, or should they have be. a relationship with the financial person. Then. Well, when they're in-house, for sure. Now, something to keep in mind, what I do with some clients is you can still shop them. You can still yeah. push them on their rate. You can have your guy that you like wherever, or you move from somewhere else. That couple of weeks before closing, you're like, hey, I'm still running floating rates. I'm approved over here at, you know, quarter percent less. Are you going to match it? Or can you buy this down for me? And I've had that happen where they will. So just keep. Oh, the individual, the private lenders? Yeah. We'll push the builder's lender mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. So just those people that are paying attention and savvy and yeah, right. maybe a certain price point can say, you know, I don't have to use you and I don't want to use you. I don't care about the five grand you're giving me because this is my relationship. I'm a, you know, whatever, five star over here at my bank. Um, they're gonna give me whatever I want. So, all right, I'll get the five grand, I'll get the free bonus room basement, but you're gonna match this rate. And they win in the long run. That's, that's still, it's still like a nice option. I tell that of everybody. You're like, not throwing in anything. <laughs> well, you can. I had like some pretty strong little clients, strong arm at that last 11th hour in the last 12 months, which I'm like, go for it. Like, are you sure? I'm like, do it. <laughs> like, that's a yeah. quarter point. Like, the pain now, you know, for that rate is forever. So, mm -hmm. that's good. but yeah, that helps. At least they had a little victory. <laughs> a little victory. Again. You'll take whatever I yeah. get at this yeah. point. Yeah. Yep. Um, we have five more minutes. Any questions on Zoom? Hope you guys didn't feel neglected. How are you going to get the Google Sheet to us? Yes. Email uh, yeah. Email it. I'll fax it to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Nobody's oh, chiming in on okay. the chat. Does the audio work for them? Uh, well, let me try it. My audio is on here. Is the chat box or pen? Does that have anything? No, no, no one's unmuting themselves. It doesn't look like. Hey, thanks for coming. We'll um, ooh, get together again um, in May. Um, I might have some builders pop in that want to. So um, Arbor Homes and Onyx and East want to talk to us. I'm going to give them like maybe three minutes because we have other things we can do. Um, Onyx and East would be good. I saw a comment about some of the questions that on the Facebook page. Yeah. I don't know who that was. Um, yeah, but someone's yeah. asking about who Onyx at least is. Are they the builder and that kind of thing? Yes. I thought it was just condoms, but maybe, or, yeah, townhomes, whatever, but not really there. But Nick, you said just townhomes. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. yeah. And mostly in like more urban areas, right? In Village, West Village. Yeah. yeah. Which, um, yeah. And then they have some buildings. Yeah, so they have Onyx and East just real fast. Do any of you do much in the downtown market? We've got like three clients down there now. And if you know me, you know I despise going downtown, but I'm starting, I'm gonna, I'm forcing myself to like it now. Uh, <laughs> Onyx and East nice has Millside 727, yeah. which is by like Irea's, I think. And it's almost sold out. Tinder Park, which is where um, on Central. Village of West Clay, near 925, I don't know that one. And Alloy is a single family. So they do have one single family. Where and then, is that? I don't know, no. Alloy, you said? A-L-L-O-Y. Alloy. That's a neighborhood they, name? Yeah. And then they have um, Monon Roots. And then another one in Carmel, and two or three more in the works. And then they currently have 25 specs huh. that are complete or under construction. So <clears throat> Denise will be here on the 11th and she can give us a little bit more on onyx and ease it's a definitely a niche niche well, product okay. yeah so we'll meet again uh may 11th i have an announcement i just got this across my phone so fisher's homes is offering a trip receive a ritz vip trip for seventy five hundred dollars with, with ritz carlton 
um, you get to pick one of three places. What are you going to do? Rising Blues, Cross College, Ritz Carlton gift card, $7,500, white voucher. $750. Oh, 750. Uh, 1750. Like 7, not 7500. That's a lot better. <laughs> 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 the sale date is defined as the actual calendar date. What are you going to do? Sell a home and your name is gets one? put in a. Just one home? A bucket. Yeah. Well, it's a bucket. Oh, yeah. 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 Whatever. It's one's a lot right now. Uh, all right, so a little bit of homework on the Google Sheet. Um, I don't think I have anybody for uh, Weekly or Fisher. Oh, I got got people? Yeah, I really like yeah, so throw it in there. It's going to have um, name and phone number and whatever. I don't care. We'll do whatever you want with the spreadsheet, but. I know, but David Weekly had a Nick, can you have, like, which, which the books are also on that? And a VIP. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And like how, like, you know, uh -huh. that time. Of, all yeah. Possible. I don't have a whole lot of the south side information. Yeah, I didn't. Um, but, uh, what's his name? Good. All right. That's good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nikki, do you have anything on just, uh, my in-house? the CEO over at been all over the world for Rob. a second, huh? Rob, yeah, Rob. What mm -hmm. do you know about the Dell Web community going into Westfield? Yeah. I don't know anything about it. Okay. So, Fran, yeah, she can't get a response. Call. She's called them. They won't, like, yeah, we're not selling yet. And they will not give right. her any information whatsoever. It's the same as Steve mentioned. I mean, I'm a friend at Lenard. She's like, I was oh, uh, contact traced with COVID. So my boss said, don't go to work. In fact, stop selling. Yeah. Because we're trying to catch up. Like, meanwhile, she's, you know, she's doing that herself. But I mean, cash checks. Yeah. She's okay. She's really good. No. All right. Um, thanks, everybody. She thanks, Nikki. Thank you, Nikki. Um, awesome. Great job. Great job. Great job. Great job. Took two pages of notes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Down, the, down the line there. Well, I like that. I like that spreadsheet. Yeah. 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 And as long as everybody's willing to, to use it.